Sonic the Hedgehog. Gaming icon, sneakers aficionado, impotence awareness spokesman. Plenty has been written about his meteoric rise and 25 years at the top. But what about the boy Fox in his shadow? Did he ride the tide of fame or drown in its icy waters? Tonight on Behind the Bites, we tell the story of Miles, tales per hour. Friend, sidekick, twin-tailed mutant. It all began in 1990 with the tragic suicide of Sega's mascot, Alex Kidd. Legally, we couldn't be held responsible for Alex's death, but off the record, it was pretty much straightforward murder. Sega needed a new direction. It needed a new mascot. Nintendo had Mario and Sega needed someone similar, someone edgy, someone foreign. And foreign he was to the human race itself. And they didn't have to look far. The office crash had bought in some children's entertainers. We thought they were in costumes, but they turned out to be the real deal. Sonic was whisked away overnight. Tails was left alone, bitter. The duo he established had fallen apart, like cake in the wind. But for the hedgehog, the only way was up. Sonic was such a hit on the scene. Everybody loved him. After months of development, Sonic the Hedgehog was released in 1991. Sonic became an international superstar. Sonic 1 was brilliant, absolutely fantastic. And it manifested every child's dream to be a really fast hedgehog and to fight Teddy Roosevelt. A sequel was rushed into development. Sonic 1 was a single act paradigm. Sonic runs fast, he fights Robotnik, and he dabbles in jewellery theft. We needed more. That more was Tails. Now destitute and working in a burlesque house, he leapt at the chance to be back in a Sonic Tails double bill. However, the original beta release, Sonic 2 Meet Tails, tested badly. Tails was too camp for a Western audience, and just not camp enough for an Eastern audience. And frankly, no one liked all those cooking levels. As a result, the game was recut and repackaged as Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Tails, forced to hang up his chef's hat, was left barely playable. But the game quickly found its market. It was like Sonic 1 on crack. We gave it 9.8. Seeing Sonic's marketing potential, Sega launched a TV series for their new mascot. Sonic's narcissism soared to all new heights but it was their on-screen chemistry that was the greatest cause for concern. Tails had uh, a sonic addiction. Yuck! Hi, my name is Tails and Sonic and I gotta go now. This had not escaped Sonic's notice. Kids, there's nothing more cool than being hugged by someone you like. But if someone tries to touch you in a place or in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable, that's no good. I think it was banned in Australia. But that was more of a quality thing. As a result of the show's failure, Sega adopted a different approach. It was felt we should go more street. More in your face. That's when we found Knuckles. Knuckles, a guinean echidna and a former cocaine dealer to the Sega executives, had exactly the kind of street cred the series needed. However, life as a video game trio was fraught with friction. Knuckles, frankly, bullied Tails. He called him Fag, Faggot, Fagwad. Fagbury, Fag on a Stick, Fag Roll. He even called him Fag Spice, which oddly predated the Spice Girls by two years. Sonic 3 was released again to acclaim. Knuckles was a smash hit. Merchandise flew off the shelves like slinkies down a slippery stairwell. Meanwhile, Tails rankled in obscurity. I was at one of Miss Pac-Man's appalling cocktail parties when out of nowhere, Tails just wailed, 
fuck gliding, I can fly. <laughs> the funny thing was, he wasn't even invited. <laughs> However, dark clouds were on the horizon. When Tails found out that the next game was going to be called Sonic and Knuckles, he just flipped. He rung me in the middle of the night, just screaming and screaming and screaming. Meanwhile, Sega's patience was wearing thin. He was old news, and no amount of tantrums were going to convince us otherwise. And when he ate the entire office kitchen stock, that was the last straw. Tails was in no man's land, and Armistice seemed years away. It wasn't until 1998 that Sega proposed their Treaty of Versailles. Sonic Adventure was going to be the biggest Sonic yet. A mammoth cast, an epic love story, a cat, fishing. It held all the ingredients for a perfect Sonic game. All we needed was the team back together. The team was reunited for Sonic's first outing in full 3D. Sonic Adventure was huge, and we gave it an unprecedented 9.81. Although, in retrospect, it was kind of a mess. I mean, who's Amy Rose and why does she get to wear clothes? Despite the commercial success, Tails was left deeply scarred, as one of Sega's experimental planes crashed horribly. He was left barely able to walk. Two Tails had become no legs. Tails could have sued us for millions. Fortunately, he's only a fox, he's not legally a person. By the time Sonic Adventure 2 appeared on the production slate, hiring fever had infected Sega HQ. They hired a Batwoman, a Sonic lookalike, a sassy alligator, a talking bee, and a Zionist rabbit, and not to mention all those stupid chows. At least by then, Big the Cat had died from mercury poisoning. Straining under the weight of this gargantuan cast, Sonic Adventure 2 was released in June 2001. However, after 9-11, the landscape changed. Kids wanted Sonic to be gritty, to tackle issues, to take on terrorism like their hero, Vladimir Putin. But we were out of ideas. And out of ideas they were. We had rumours of a Sonic spelling game, a Big the Cat zombie fishing spin-off, and a urban rap music game starring Knuckles where you type along with his dope rhymes. Before these games saw the light of day, the team thankfully went their separate ways. Sonic toured the talk show circuit promoting his memoir, I, Sonic, while Knuckles became a K-pop sensation. For our twin-tailed friend, however, things were less successful. He opened his front door and I was confronted by this wall of flesh. The truth was far worse than anyone could have suspected. Tails had developed a chronic eating disorder. Within six months of the release of Sonic Adventure 2, he had put on over 480 pounds. Have you seen Alice in Wonderland? The bit where she's wearing the house? Well, we managed to get him outside and he tried to fly, but instead he just rolled. By this point, Tails had far exceeded Amy's previous record as the fattest animal in the Sega stable. However, an unlikely source offered Tails a ray of hope. Mario went to him out of the blue and said, how about it, man? The Olympics. Tails went into training overdrive. He lost hundreds of pounds and by 2007, he was ready. Sonic Team versus Mario Team. It was iconic. It was so great to see them all back together again. Even though both teams had their Achilles heels, Sonic had Amy Rose, while Mario had Daisy, who at that point was on day leave from the clinic. Old wounds had finally been healed, but disease lingered on beneath the skin. Of course, Luigi hated Tails. Luigi was very close to the Beijing regime at the time, and of course, Tails had been to a free Tibet rally in the early 90s. Despite these complications with the Green Plumber, the games were a revelation for Tails. He came to me and said, Tell your readers, I'm ready. I'm ready to be a sidekick. He didn't need a double billing anymore. He didn't want to be bitter. He said, all I want 
is to be happy, to be with Sonic. <laughs> By the time Sonic Unleashed arrived, Tails knew his role. Hey, Sonic! 20 years on from their first outing, Tails had finally found his place, running alongside his best friend onto their next adventure. Next time, he was the legendary hero of time, she, the pint-sized prima donna. Find out more here on Behind the Bites. <laughs>